Okay, we're gonna try this video again. Uh, I got a brand new phone, um, so <laughs> bear with me. It's got a. Uh, when I did the first video, it started going. The focus was going in and out, and I couldn't figure out how to stop it. But um, I think I got it. Okay, uh, this is another haul, and I'm gonna show you what I picked up. I picked up quite a bit of new books. Um. Uh, Books that I went to the two dollar long boxes and in the bin, so um, it's pretty a lot of books to show, especially a couple weeks of uh, new books that I haven't picked up. Starting with uh, the A, I'm, I'm sorry, the B cover for the Mark. This is the B cover for the Mark. It's picking up a little bit of buzz, but um, I haven't read it yet, but it's getting positive reviews. Spawn number three hundred. Uh, the Todd McFarlane cover. I got the uh, um, variant A cover for Harley Quinn Poison Ivy number two. This is the um, Harley Quinn cover A. And this is the Poison Ivy um, cover B. Picked up uh, Flash Forward number two. Um, really like that cover. I hate what they did with Wally, but I, I really like that cover. Uh, I like this cover too for Batman number 81, the uh, B cover for that. Pretty powerful looking. Here's a good book. Um, man, this book was good. Uh, Death of Superman from the Dark Multiverse. Uh, the, the, Shows the grief of Lois Lane, and that that's Lois Lane on the cover, not Superman. I mean, not um, Supergirl. <laughs> but um, man, I give this book kudu, kudu, um, major kudos because it's it's a great, great book. In fact, this this book gives something I haven't done in a long time. This book gets a standing ovation. I'm sorry, great story, good art. I mean, this book is um. A bona fide sleeper book. I tell you, uh, this is going to be one of the books I feel that in the long run is going to be a slow burner. And because of the price point, it's a little bit more expensive than an average book. I don't think a lot of people are going to pick it up. Um, and I, I just got a good feeling about this book. That's why I got multiple copies of it. Batwoman Beyond, another book that's, that's super hot right now. Um, Issue number 37. Um, what more can you say? Everybody's thinking they're, they're specking on Batman Beyond number 25, which has the first appearance of Dick Grayson's daughter. Um, they're thinking that she may be the Batwoman Beyond. I have another theory, and um, I may throw a hint here and there, but I think it's something dealing with um, something way, way back of a Batman Beyond book that I had talked about a long, long time ago. And I think that this this character is the, um, the uh, what's the way to say it? Um, she's different, totally different. That's the only thing I can say for now. Okay, just stay tuned. We'll all get surprised. I could be uh, really, really wrong, you know, but it is what it is. Marvel Comics presents issue number eight. I picked up two copies of that um, because it's a uh, it's the second printing, and it's a great cover appearance of Rain, and um, I, I really like that cover. I should have picked up some more because the, the shop had quite a few copies of it. J. Scott Campbell cover for Fantastic Four number fifteen for the Mary Jane variant. Um, Silver Surfer Black, number five, a nice Ron Lim cover of Surfer and Null. Art Germ cover for Amazing Mary Jane, issue number one variant. The Agents of Atlas, number one, uh, first issue variant. The Mark Brooks, um, issue number one of X-Men. You know, Mark Brooks is kind of like Alex Ross. Very, very capable artist. Has some beautiful covers. But for some reason, they, he doesn't get the same notoriety as um, J. Scott Campbell or um, Art Germ. But his art, is, to me, is, is 
on par with all of them. Um, Powers of X, issue number five. This is the um, swimsuit issue. Our cover, not issue, I'm sorry. The Art Germ variant cover for X-Men number one. Beautiful Jean Grey. Alex Ross variant cover for Avengers number 25. Beautiful Scarlet Witch cover. Now this book is hot. I went when I found this book was hot. I went to one of my favorite comic shops and they had uh, two left. Dead Man Logan, issue number eleven, the first appearance of uh, Danny Cage as Thor, Luke Cage and uh, Jessica Jones' daughter. In this um, reality, picks up the hammer of Thor and she becomes the new Thor. And I also picked up. Um, Issue number 12, to be on the safe side, because it seems like people, uh, the powers that be, can't decide what is a first appearance and what is a cameo appearance. So to cover my bases, I pick up 11 and 12. Uh, I found, um, these books cost me roughly um, $5 a piece. Catwoman number 73. Found another copy of that. I didn't have this copy. It's one of the copies of Catwoman that I was missing. I'm so glad to get it. Catwoman number 81. Uh, both of those are Adam Hughes cover. The Mike Finch cover for Brightest Day number 14 with um, White Lantern Batman. Got another copy of Astonishing X-Men. Uh, issue number 43 with the Art Adams White Queen cover. I got another copy of Venom, number 38, the first appearance of Mania. Thor, another copy of that. Thor, issue number 8, when Jane Fa when it's revealed that Jane Foster is actually Thor. Early Moon Knight from Marvel 2 and 1, issue number 52. I don't know if this is a Whitman variant of Micronauts number three or if it was an um, insert in uh, a comic book that was included with a, a toy. I'm not sure, but I definitely picked that up. Issue number three of the Micronauts. R, issue number one. Definitely picked that up. And um, this book I got for seven. Defenders number 15. And the reason I got that, because like I said, I, I really like those older books when they had team-ups and uh, 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 heroes fighting villains that they never, what well, it normally wouldn't fight. Because back then it was like a special thing when you saw Magneto show up fighting somebody like the Avengers or the Defenders. But now in this age, it's so commonplace to see any hero with any villain that um, doesn't have any any magic to it. The magic back then, I mean, of Magneto and his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants versus the Defenders, man. You look at that book back in the day, you'd be like, oh, man, you know, it's something I got to get. And uh, when I saw it, my eyes lit up. I had to have this book. Now, the rest of these books are from $2 long boxes. And you know me, I love digging in long boxes, the $2, the $1, the 50 cent dollars, 50 cent bin or whatever. Uh, I get a kick out of it. Issue number two of Superman Adventures, I picked that up. Greg Land's cover for um, Legion of Monsters Werewolf by Night, issue number one. This was a, um, a comic that was in the... Uh, Toys, uh, Marvel Select, I think it was Marvel Selects or something. But this is Incredible Hulk, um, a reprint of issue number 314 by John Byrne. Like I said, whenever I see this book in the dollar bins, two dollar bins, I always pick it up because I don't think Marvel is through with the Ultimates yet. And um, just for the uh, fact that it's the first appearance of a different type of Avengers. Makes me pick it up. And this one, I don't know. I, it's supposedly, this is um, Fantastic Four number 558. 
And if you look in the um, comic book realm or wherever, they um, state that this is the first appearance of Old Man Logan. Now, I done been through this book from back to front, up to down. I do not see Old Man Logan in this book. Nowhere. Uh, uh, if somebody knows what page or whatever, please point it out to me. Because I done been through this book three times. I have not seen Old Man Logan in this book once. And I still talking about a mention of him, but then again, uh, that to me wouldn't rate being the first appearance. Uh, Batman Detective Comics issue 1001. This is a uh, uh, second print. And um, what's cool about it, the uh, background is in red. I uh, really dig that. Heroes in Crisis, issue number two. This is a um, third print of that book with the um, Har Harley Quinn with the Wonder Woman's lasso around Batman's neck. I found the, what is this, the fourth print? A Once in Future issue number one. Tomb Raider number two. This is the um, Thunder Records version. Now this, I already have two copies of this. But I found one, two, three, four more copies. And bad part about it, in that long box... There was about 15 more of them of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, second printing of issue number 95, uh, cover appearance of Janica, Janica as a turtle. Um, and I, I just grabbed them. I wasn't going to let them sit there. I also picked up the B cover for Detective Comics 1001. Uh, the B cover for Gotham City Monsters, number one. Year of the Villain, the variant cover by Art Germ for Cheetah. Picked up one, two copies of that. Check this out. I said this a long time ago when these first came out that they were being the dollar bands. And sure enough, <laughs> Detective Comics, number 1,000. That is the um, Steve Rude cover. Detective Comics 1000, the Midnight Edition uh, cover. I picked that up. Marvel Comics presents third printing of issue number six with um, rain on the front cover. Um, issue number seven, second printing. Marvel Comics 1001, this is a superhero variant cover um, that's um, both front and back covers. I should have picked up two of them, that way I could have showed them uh, to you together. The Incredible Immortal Hulk, number 19, picked up an extra copy of that. Immortal Hulk variant, number 18, with the Hulk Bust, Iron Man and the Hulk Buster, um, Outfit. This was in the um, two dollar bin. Fantastic Four, number fourteen, with the immortal variant of Doctor Doom. Two copies of Deadpool, number fifteen, the variant by Scotty Young. Conan the Barbarian, the Red um, Goblin, Mark Brooks cover. Picked up two more of that. Man, this almost had a whole long box of this. Captain Marvel number eight um, with Star, the second printing. Picked up two copies of that. Black Cat, issue number two, Mark Brooks cover variant. Could believe I got that for $2. So I picked up two of them. Avengers variant for issue number nine with the uh, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Uncanny X-Men. Issue number three. Nice Storm variant. Another variant for uh, Astonishing X-Men. Issue number two. Star Wars Age of the Republic. Padme Amadala. 
issue number one variant. And the last, boy, this one, I, I was real happy. I had to look at it twice, and I had to try to find, uh, just to make sure that that um, signature wasn't on another book, uh, that the book wasn't printed that way. Uh, Walt Simonson's The Mighty Thor variant for issue number one, and it's signed by um, Walt Simonson. And I'm not really big into getting signatures. I, I like getting signatures on books. I don't go out of my way to get signatures on, on, on comic books. And I'm not paying um, uh, exorbitant prices for anybody's signature on a comic book. But and another thing about signatures on a comic book, if the uh, artist's got an ugly sig signature, I don't want it anyway. I want something that's going to complement, you know, complement the art piece, you know. Somebody with nasty... Um, um, hand they might can draw their tail off but as far as writing it looked like they they went to uh they're still in grade school trying to figure out how to how to spell you know i don't want that marring up my book you know it's only certain artists who really have a knack for or really have a good signature um you know jim lee i like his signature even though it's evolved now it's just like a big j with a lot of wiggle, 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 wiggles behind it um john byrne Steranko, Simonson, um, they have beautiful, um, to me, they have beautiful and unique um, signatures, you know, and um, that I don't mind. But when you get some of them other ones, I, I'm not going to name anybody, but I mean, and then they'll write it um, from some of the books I've seen on YouTube, and to me, they mar them books up, um, uh, you know, maybe it's to each his own, you know. Uh, you know, <laughs> to each his own. But I, I really like what Walt Simonson did with this one, you know, and the finding in the um, $2 bin. I was like, wow, you know. Th whoever had this, either I think they sold it by mistake or maybe they just was getting out of the game. But it's a beautiful piece, and the uh, uh, signature complements the art, you know, very, very nicely. And that's the last book I got. I know I'll probably hear about, you know, people say I'm hating on signatures. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that at all. You know, it's just what I like, and I just don't like ugly signatures. You know, it doesn't It doesn't make the book look good. Stan Lee has a, a beautiful signature when he, his earlier, even his later Stan Lee signature wasn't that bad, you know, for a man of his age. Wasn't that bad, you know. And uh, I think I didn't talk enough. <laughs> I'm tired. And that's all I got to show anyway. So um hope you all enjoyed the video. And I hope I didn't go on a tangent too much. You know, I have a tendency for going on a tangent. <laughs> but um, uh, that'll be it until I come up with another video. I think I might just start pulling books out and just showing them randomly. Take a stack from here and just... Whatever it is, show it, you know, do like a reflection of what I have. I mean, I got quite a bit. All right, guys, that's it. Bad Avenger, y'all guys be well, take care. I'll see you on the next trip. Bye.